Are officials in Boise, Idaho going on a book banning craze? This is an article that I got off of World Net Daily, and it says the Alliance Defense Fund has filed a notice of appeal with the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals of a trial court's uh, affirmation of an Idaho state agency decision that it could ban any book, including the Bible, it determined to be religious. Uh, censoring classical books, including religious books, does not improve a student's education. It harms it said ADF senior legal counsel David Cortman of the filing this week. A wholesale ban on books with the religious content conflicts with established U, uh, U.S. Supreme Court precedent stating that even the Bible may constitutionally be used as an appropriate study of history, civilization, ethics, comparative religion, or the like. And the dispute centers on curriculum plans adopted by Nampa Classical Academy. I'm assuming that this is maybe a charter school uh, which was preparing for its instruction of more than 500 students. Officials obtained approval from the State Board of Education in 2008 and then followed up with positive responses from the Public Charter School Commission as it developed its standards and curriculum. Then last year, the State Commission suddenly raised objections and prohibited the Academy from using any religious documents and text in its curriculum or in its classrooms, even if, you, even if used objectively as a resource. So let's assume for a moment that they start with the Bible and they say, well, the Bible is obviously a religious text. We can't even study it for history. We can't even study the Bible uh, as, uh, as, as the claim, say, as Earl Warren stated in, in 1954, uh, that, the, that the Bible is the bedrock of America's republic, and you really cannot understand the founding of America unless you understand the Bible. So, which would mean that if a Supreme Court justice uh, makes reference to the Bible, and then you use that Supreme Court justice, uh, that particular statement is to say, look, this is a historical assessment uh, by the Supreme Court Justice on the use of the Bible and the foundation of the Bible for the founding of America, uh, then we can't use that in a, in a classroom. Then you have to say, well, you couldn't even use the Constitution of the United States because the Constitution of the United States makes a reference to the Bible in that it sets uh, Sunday aside as a day of rest for the President in Article 1, Section 7. And then you'd have to go further than that, and you could say, someone could say, well, we can't use the Constitution of the United States because the Constitution of the United States uh, states this was done in the year of our Lord, 1787, which is a direct reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then you couldn't use, then you, another one could break an argument that says, look, you can't really use the Constitution of the United States because it talks about gold and silver as, as being a payment of debts uh, required by the states. Uh, and since gold and silver is found in the Bible in the same types of in, in the same type of, of of fashion, there's another reason why you can't use the Constitution. Then you could go even further and say you can't use the Constitution because the First Amendment to the Constitution says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And you certainly can't have that in there because it states that it, you can't prohibit the free exercise of religion, which of course would go against this very directive on, on, on the face of it. Then you couldn't make any reference to uh, Benjamin Franklin, who stood up at the Constitutional Convention and said, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Psalm 127, verse 1. Uh, you couldn't use anything by Thomas Jefferson. You, you couldn't, for example, make reference uh, to his uh, book, the, the Morals of Jesus, because the Morals of Jesus is based upon Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Sure, it takes out the, uh, the supernatural elements, but it's a moral, it, it's, it's a moral inst instruction manual designed for the Indians based upon the Bible. Uh, you, can't, you couldn't make reference to any of the colonial charters. You couldn't make reference to, say, the, the Mayflower Compact. You couldn't make, uh, make reference to the state constitutions, the colonial constitutions at the time, and many of which is, are very specific about uh, religion. In fact, the, the Constitution of North Carolina, all the way up to probably uh, 1868, 
uh, said a person had to believe in the authority of both the Old and New Testament in order to hold office uh, in, in the state of North Carolina. Uh, you couldn't make reference to the state constitutions, probably even the state constitution of Idaho, because uh, all of the state constitutions make reference to God in some way, in some fashion. You probably couldn't use Shakespeare because of all the, the theological and basically Christian al allusions in there uh, and, and so forth. So now Shakespeare goes out the window. Uh, and uh, the, the, you would be so stuck uh, with the inability to, to, to deal with anything regarding religion that you probably couldn't teach at all because there would always be somebody out there who would take it back to religion. The Declaration of Independence. We are endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. Uh, God is called the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the judge of the world in there. Um, so th this, this, of course, is absolutely uh, ridiculous, but it's, th it's something that we expect on a regular basis uh, from governmental officials. They have an agenda. Their agenda is to remove anything religious from, from, from any particular document so that they can teach in a very secular way. And that brings me down to the next point. You couldn't even teach, uh, couldn't even use a book on atheism in the schools because atheists make reference to religious precepts. They quote passages from the Bible. If you go through Christopher Hitchens' book, uh, God is Not Great, he appeals to the Bible and there to try to make his case that God does not exist. Dawkins does the same. Uh, and so the, the dilemma that this would create, and of course, Christians could tie up this whole thing in court by making those types of appeals. Um, so what we are left with here is, is just plain nonsense, but it shows the radical agenda of, of, of public school uh, personalities, uh, and uh, this is just another indication, uh, another reason why Christians need to abandon these schools uh, and start your own schools. And this is another reason why Christians need to be involved with an organization like the Alliance Defense Fund. If you want to go to law school, if this is where you believe your calling is, to go there, uh, to study, to, uh, to become a lawyer, to get on these courts. One of the reasons we are, we are losing at the legislative level is because the courts have taken over all legislative processes. We have turned everything over to the courts, and therefore whoever is on the courts determine for us what constitutes the law. So here is another absurd uh, uh, determination by uh, s s some group of officials in Idaho uh, and, uh, and, and so forth. So what is ADF going to do? It says, and the curriculum the Academy chose in this case is fully within the U.S. Supreme Court has stated as acceptable and constitutional, ADF uh, attorney Courtman said, on these grounds alone, we trust the decision will be reversed on appeal. I would say, don't count on it. We need to put more and more pressure, however, on these particular nonsense decision making, uh, express the logic of it all to parents, but at the same time, we need to say, parents, you're fighting a battle that maybe God doesn't want you to fight. Maybe God is saying to you, well, I know he is saying to you, why are you sending your children to these types of schools? Uh, why are you robbing taxpayers in order for you to get a so-called free education? Uh, do the righteous thing, get your children out, put them in, in, a, in a school that you end up paying for and, th and therefore you end up controlling because you pay for it in two ways. You pay for it with your dollars and you pay for it with your feet. That is, you can always go somewhere else, take your money with you, and take your children with you in order to get your child the type of education that he or she should have. American Vision is proud to present this year's Worldview Super Conference, July 21st through 24th at North Metro Church, Marietta, Georgia. For more information, visit conference.americanvision.org. That's conference.americanvision.org.